Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Abhinav Shaktivel, and in this video, we are going to solve one real world problem. Um, how we can migrate from old Selenium motion to the latest one? Again, this is a question asked in LinkedIn uh, by Kushal, and he wants to update this, uh, update a lot of projects from older version to latest version, and. Um, and yeah, and, and and I also commented the good way to do this is using source scrap patches, even though um, people told a lot of manual work and then using ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot, but it wouldn't be very effective for these kind of abstractions because, um, you know, it can it can do file level changes, but then in, in terms of uh, doing a repository level changes is something that uh, these, these uh, ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot are not ready um, or will not do that much, right? So, so in these cases, it's better to use um, source graph bait batch changes. Um, what it does is um, you can create a script and then uh, you can run it on multiple repositories. And uh, you again, let's say if you want to do with changes on 100 repositories, or uh, in this case, in his case, it's 12 repositories. Uh, all the time he has to pull the code for, for all these 12 repositories into his local, make changes, create PR. But this source graph batch change will do automatically everything at the server side, which means you don't have to even pull the code. You don't even have to, uh, you know, create PRs. It, it does everything for them. And it all it also gives a beautiful UI how we could, um, you know, manage all those pull requests, uh, you know, get see them getting merged and everything, track them all in one place. Uh, but again, you can see this demo video if you want to learn more or you can you know, learn about all these things in this documentation, but but this is a paid tool. Again, um, you know, I cannot showcase how to use source graph in this case, but I can literally give you an idea how I would approach if I don't have source graph and how what source graph use internally, right? So basically in source graph, you could write set, set commands, a CD commands uh, to replace contents in line, so, right? Um, so let's go ahead and do it. And this is an example of a similar project that I created long back using Selenium. Let's say I want to migrate this to latest version. Uh, the first step that I want to do is, you know, um, update the version. And then I also want to change the usages like this, the older usages. Um, and let's try to do this. And this is my uh, command line. Uh, I am in the, inside this framework and let's, let's try to do this, right? So first I want to find uh, form.xml. Again, guys, uh, you can try to, um, uh, use rejects here. You can use rejects. You can also use folder wise targeting and all that. But this is a simple find command because I know that I only have one formula XML where my dependencies are managed. So I am just going to use this command and XOX as G said. So what uh, what this one does is um um so whatever let's say left hand side. Let's say even if it is hundred files that matches this particular criteria one by one, all these uh, outputs will be fed as input to this particular argument on the right hand side, okay? So the X ox indicates that, and this pipeline is what that separates from this argument to the other argument, right? So in this particular case, there is only one file, but let's say in next case, we will have multiple Java files, and uh, you will understand why this is a kind of useful. And G said, basically, if you are using Windows, you can use SCD commands, but in case of, uh, this is seem like, uh, you know, stream editor, right? So basically we are trying to do content wise check and then replace them, you know? So hyphen I indicates that I want to replace them in line. If you don't put this, then the command that we are going to run will only produce the console output. Let's say I try to replace this and it got replaced by this, but it won't replace it. But in our case, we want to replace the exact content. So you want to replace this exact line with a new line, right? So what I can do is, um, so here's a yes indicate substitute. I want to substitute what you want to substitute, okay? You have to put it in this thing, okay? So the left, the first two indicates what you want to replace. So I want to replace, let's say version, and, um, and then so let's say this is the version um, 3.141.59. And yeah, so version. This one I want to replace, but the problem is we also use the same slashes for indicating what you want to replace. So I want to escape this particular one. So I will use something like this, okay? And what I want to replace them with. So I want to replace them with version, um, let's say 4.21.0 and then um, 
uh, version, right? Okay, the problem is I don't I I want to back, uh, you know escape this particular slash. So again, you can use G if there are multiple instances of same line. Okay, you want to replace. Let's say in this file there are ten lines that is matching this. You want to replace all of them or just one? If you want to replace just one, you can you don't have to give G. In our case, we can also give G because it will replace all the instances where it matches the first this particular argument. Okay. So let me try to run it. Okay, I don't know what's happening. Okay, I didn't close it. That's the problem. So let me try to do this and let's try to run with G. What is happening? Yeah. So now I ran this command and let's see what happened. So if you notice the version got updated, you can also see uh, you know, in the in the changes, it, it got updated. And uh, this is kind of very similar that what we wanted. And let's try to do the second one, okay? So the second one, now we started to throw errors because we have updated the uh, version and it started to throw these errors because we want to replace this particular line with duration dot of seconds, right? So now the syntax is different. So for people who don't know, we have to replace something like this, okay? Um, instead of this, okay. So let me. You can just copy this entire thing, and you can just try to um, replace the previous command. And what you can do is, or well, we can just write it out, okay. So what I can do is um, find, and I want to find all these Java files, right? So you can do multiple things. So what I I'm going to do is find inside src folder. And I want to focus only on files, okay? I don't want to focus on subdirectories, okay? I want to focus only on files that has names that are ending with Java, okay? And, and this is xorx, gz again. And I want to edit them in line. And I want to substitute um, these things, okay? Maybe I'll put like this. Now, I want to substitute this with um, this. But instead of this, I will use duration dot of seconds 15. Correct? Yeah. So now I want to do this and I want to make these changes across multiple instances. Everything looks good. And this time it worked. Let's see the changes. So if you notice the command line, um, so it changed two places in mobile access. This is why we want to use um, slash G. So it changed in a couple of places and it also changed here in another file, right? Um, again, you can also notice this is throwing error um, in the Selenium action. So let's go ahead and see what is this error, okay? So Selenium actions. So if you notice here, we don't have this import statement, it seems. That's why it's throwing error. Um, I don't know why, okay, so the problem is, you can see uh, we replaced the um, 15, but then there is also cases where you are using a different timeout, okay, instead of this. Um, and then in this case, um, let's say, so we have to import these classes. So these are a couple of problems. So first let's sort out this duration issue. So what you can do is, um, whenever we are using new web driver wait, anyways, the world record will also have uh, this particular import statement, okay? So now, in this import statement, if there is this particular import statement, I also want to add a new statement that is um, import java.util.duration, okay? Uh, so we can do that. Like, let's say let's go to mobile, mobile actions. And let's see this. Java dot time dot duration. Okay. So we whenever there is this, you have to add this. Okay. Then you know if you are not sure about how to do this, you can also take help from chat GPT. Hey, can you give me um set command to replace to add um, Java if add new to add new import statement when you find Existing this. 
so it, it gave something like this okay this is more than enough for us so i think i am only interested in this okay let's copy this and let's go here and let me clear out all this stuff and uh, again this i have to run it on all the java files right so i will similarly use um, find src um, and i'll just replace this whole stuff okay I don't know if I have copied the single quotes as well, but let me just paste it. Yeah. So now, um, oh man. Okay. So um, I think it's better to basically uh, paste them here in a different one, and then just do uh, Java dot um, time dot duration, right? And then you can just simply copy this, and then let's say. Mm -hmm. right and we can just replace this whole thing mm -hmm. come on again i don't want the shortcut to remove it quickly yeah so now i will run this and this will run on all the files let's see what happens so now if you notice mm -hmm. It added an extra extra imports and all that, but you can obviously right, uh, you know, uh, optimize imports. You can use the uh, you know uh, thing, or you can check if it is already existing duration. You don't have to add it. You can do all those conditions, but this is just an example. But it have act, uh, you know added it here, right? So you can you can just handle it, you know, uh, even in the set command itself. But yeah, it's all possible. But this is just for an idea. Again, for this thing. Instead of hard coding the value that we used, you can use regular expression of digits. Okay, so I can use slash digits, and then and then uh, you can use the set command. So this is just a general idea how we want to do this. Now you can you can what you can do is let's say we so you can you will get some kind of commands like this, right? So let me go ahead and fetch all the commands that I ran so far. This is one command that I ran. Okay, and. Uh, this is one command I ran. And before that, I ran some other command. I think I ran this command. Okay. So let me copy this. And let's keep it here. Um, and then before that, I, I ran the file. Right. This command I ran. So let's copy these commands. Okay. And then I just simply can create. Okay. Go ahead and basically create a new file called us, let's say, migration.sh um i don't want to add it now i can put it here and uh, so you can simply run okay let's go here and uh, um shell migration.sh again if you are using windows you can use batch command batch file so what you can do is you can just simply run this let me go ahead and uh, let's say i roll back all these changes maybe roll back Back, all these things okay now i only have this and if we try to run this it will execute all these commands and if you notice all these changes are now visible so so this is how basically you could create a migration script give it to people from other teams to run it once just once in your entire project directive and then create a pr again all these operations will be very simple if you use source graph because all these things will be happening at the server side you just still need to uh, frame this uh, set commands, which is the core, right? So you have to find these set commands to replace them. That is still the extra work that you have to do, but you, you can use chat GPT for all of that. And um, and yeah, somebody can create a PR out of it. And uh, yeah, we can do a little bit of tweaking, but you, to solve this entire thing, so you can also see the gate from um, this uh, Selenium guys, like what are the different changes they have done? You know, you can find changes like this. Uh, this is just a one-time effort. Um, you, if you do it, uh, basically, at one for one project, and then it can be just replicated in another project very easily. So this is one of the changes they mentioned. Uh, if you are using Gradle, you can use this. Um, there are also changes in the implicit weight, and I don't have implicit weight in my code. But if you had, you can also use the same kind of logic set commands. So maybe you have to create ten to fifteen set commands and then just run them one by one, and it should do the job for you. 
Um, that's all about for this video. I hope this is useful. And if you have any such interesting use case that you are trying to solve in your in your organization or in your project, um, just let me know. I'll try to solve them. How how I approach to solve them. Um, to let you guys know how I think, how I approach, how to solve these kind of problems. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot.